Hey there, Nick Genetakis here. In this video, let's talk a little bit about Kanban boards, or maybe they're called Kanban boards. Apparently, both pronunciations are pretty well accepted. Feel free to let me know in the comments which ones you prefer. But uh, in this video, we're going to be looking at a couple of different Kanban boards that you can use. And ultimately, I've chosen the one that we're looking at here, which is literally called My Personal Kanban. And over here, you can see it is on GitHub. I'll make sure to leave a link in the description. Now, what's really interesting about this one is it's completely open source and completely offline. And you don't need to run any complicated web server to get everything up and running. You literally clone it to somewhere on your computer, open up the HTML file, the index.html, and uh, what you see is what you get. Everything just works right out of the box. Now this one's pretty neat too because it saves everything to local storage in your browser. So you know if you shut down your browser, all of these things will just come back as long as you don't clear your, uh, your local storage from your browser. However, there's also some options here where you can export this entire Kanban board to a JSON file and then you can just import it later on. So it's very easy to back up. Now, I didn't just wake up one day and I'm like, you know what? I'm gonna start using Kanban boards. That's basically what I'm gonna do today. Uh, no, it was nothing like that at all. So I kind of like to always in my videos go over both like the why and the how. So for a second here, we're gonna go over the why. So what we're looking at here is uh, my LMS project, which is basically like learning management system. It's my course platform that I'm working on. And this is not an open source project yet because the project itself hasn't even shipped yet. It's not like, you know, up and running somewhere. It's, it's not a fully fledged course platform yet. But, you know, quite a lot of stuff has been finished. But I found myself doing some pretty bad things. So, you know, there's, there's like dozens and dozens and dozens of files in this project. And I found myself just littering crap like this all over the place in this project, like random to do's and like do this and do that and do this and do that. Maybe do this, maybe do that. What about this? What about that? And like, before you know it, and this is just at the bottom of one file. Uh, in a lot of these files, you have things like this scattered about everywhere. And uh, when I did a word count on the entire project, there was something like, like 400 to do items. And there was just like, oh my God, dozens of like, old code that was commented out because, you know, as I'm working on this project, I'm kind of learning Elixir and Phoenix as I go, which is the, the web framework and language that I'm using to build this platform. And, you know, when you're learning something new, it's like you write code one way and then it's like, well, you know, you write a little bit more code for maybe 10 or 20 hours and you're like, huh, you know, that thing I wrote like three days ago, 20 hours ago or whatever, maybe that should get rewritten a different way. But it's like, well, you know, you don't want to just get rid of the old way because it's like you're still learning. You know, you kind of want to have that old code as a reference maybe just to see what not to do. And like before you know it, yeah, like honestly speaking, more than like almost more than the actual code that I had written ended up being commented out code. And I don't know, there was this one book that, that I read a really long time ago, uh, The Pragmatic Programmer. It's one of the few programming books I've ever read. And I forget... And, and that book is very good, by the way. I highly, highly, highly recommend it. Uh, I'll leave a link in the description for that one. But, you know, it's like a tip-based book. It's a general book that applies to basically any programmer. It doesn't really matter what programming language you use. And I actually forgot the exact tip that was in the book, but it was something about, um, I don't know, like broken windows, right? I mean, the basic idea is like, if you have this code base that has, you know, all sorts of messy components to it, it just brings you down. Like seeing all of this stuff in every file, every time I open it, it just made me think like, man, why can't I have nice things? Like this project is never going to get done. Like every time I look at it, there's like a thousand to-do items scattered everywhere. You know, I'm forgetting what I need to work on unless I just like grab the code base for to-dos and go through all these files individually. And the readme file, which is now happily empty, was like a 4,000 line file with like, a million things, a million things. Well, not a million things, actually. Basically, what you see here. Uh, so what I did do is I spent about, I don't know, hour and a half or something like that, just going through my readme file and uh, converting all of that crap to really like isolated things that I can specifically work on. So, and by the way, you know, this is this project that we're looking at here, which you can download for free. Uh, I guess I just want to, before we get into this really quick, just go over maybe some alternatives that you might want to consider looking into. So GitHub has their own like project planner, which is 
essentially a Kanban board, right? It's like you can put things in certain columns and move them across. You know, in this case, it's like, oh yeah, here here's some to-do items. And now it's like, okay, this is something I want to use. And like, you'll drop it over into the second column. And then when you're done with that, you can put it into the other column. And it's kind of nice, right? If you're using GitHub, I guess, all of your uh, things can be intermingled. Like you can probably link issues and stuff like that. So that's pretty cool. So then GitLab also has their own like issue board. I guess that's a very similar concept. And then also there's Trello, which is uh, free for a lot of projects, but you can see it's also paid as well. And you know, Trello is probably one of the more popular Kanban boards that you can just sign up for. But uh, you know, it's an online program. It's it's running on somebody else's servers. All of your information is on their server. And you know, that's not really too big of a deal, I guess, especially if you're on GitHub or GitLab or something like that. But I, what I really, you know, I like about this one is it's fully offline. So since my project is not on GitHub yet, I figured, hey, I'm gonna do it here. And maybe I'll move it to GitHub at some point in the future. Now, my board looks a little bit messy, I guess you can say, like it's very lopsided. There's many things in research and planning and like nothing being done or doing. And by the way, you can rename these columns to whatever you want. So you just click the wrench here and it's like, well, you wanna name that to something else or pick a color for it, you can do all that stuff. And uh, you know, if you wanted to just move things between uh, columns, you know, you can just drag and drop them. You can see the counts get updated in real time. And if like you want to add something to this specific column, you just hit the plus sign, you know, type in what you want to type in, and uh, then there it is. And then it's like you want to edit it later, you can just start editing it. You know, you can put different colors, like whatever you like. So for me, I think this has just enough features for me to be very happy to use it. Now. In this case, like why it looks so lopsided is because I went through my readme file and just started breaking stuff out. Like use day.js instead of moment.js. And then when I click on that, it's like there's a link to day.js and like, you know, some context of why I decided to maybe even consider switching between them. You know, it's more lightweight and it does everything I need. Like why wouldn't I use that? So a lot of these items here are me just basically giving notes to myself. And now what's really nice about this is and also what's really uh, bad about this is, so if I'm like, you know, in here working with a file like this, you know, when I want to try to work on something, it's like, well, what do I even want to work on? It's so hard to figure out, you know, where and what I need to work on. Whereas when I'm looking at the Kanban board, it's like, I can just pick something from this planning list and be like, okay, I'm dealing with user uploads today. Let me just go ahead and, and deal with like, am I going to be using built or am I going to be using waffle? And those are both like Elixir packages for dealing with file uploads. Or like, huh, maybe I'm ready to work on some UI stuff. You know, where's the video download button going to go? Like in this case, I wrote some notes here, like, well, maybe it could be overlaid on the, onto the video itself, or is that going to be too busy? Like with the other arrows and other icons there, like, you know, what's really nice about this is like, you can have an idea while coding or maybe you're done for the day and you just kind of get an idea late at night or something. And you can just, you know, plop open a new item here, write it down write down some context and then you're ready to go the next day. So this video, you know, it's sort of kind of like um, just an awareness to maybe if you're not using this type of like project organization strategy, it's a reasonable idea to consider because prior to this, what I was doing previously in a brand new project, and I have videos on this as well, is I would really just open up a brand new markdown file and just brain dump everything about the project into that file. And I would just start working on it uh, based on that. And you know, that works pretty cool when you're dealing with one file, but like when your project is actually being developed and you're, you know, things are bro broken out into many files and things are going underway, you know, it's way nicer just to have everything organized in here. So I think from now on, um, I may just start with the Kanban board from day one. I think it might just be a little bit easier to reason about and uh, less duplicating. Like I wouldn't need to go and write that markdown file first and then ultimately convert that to a Kanban board later. But uh, anyways, you know, this is a pretty short video. I uh, hope you get some ideas on how to organize your projects from it. And by the way, you can even add more columns here if you want. I kind of like to do four. So this research column was sort of like, this will never really be moved to the next column because the idea of how to use this board, right? It's like you kind of move from left to right. But in this case, you know, you can kind of use these however you want. Like research for me is like some blog posts or things that I might look into doing. Uh, I think that's kind of a nice touch. You know, it's something you don't need to do, but it's kind of cool to have this all along your project uh, like features as well, because then it's like, you know, when you're ready to implement something to go beyond the research phase, then it's like, yeah, you know, maybe you can move it to planning at some point. But uh, anyways, thanks a lot for watching. If you enjoy this video, please give it a thumbs up. 
And uh, let me know in the comments if you've been using Kanban boards in the past and which one you prefer. Thanks again, and I'll see you in the next video.